Hi, and welcome to Astro Science, and this is the roundest object in the world. It is an almost perfect sphere of silicon made of the same isotope of this element. That is to say, all the atoms of this sphere have the same number of protons and the same number of neutrons. Just getting this material cost a million dollars, but now that it's sculpted, its value is incalculable. This sphere was made with the aim of updating the definition of a kilogram, so an object with a known volume was needed to be able to know how many atoms the sphere contained. The idea is that the definition of a kilogram is the weight of all the atoms that are in the sphere, so it had to be extremely spherical so as to not discount any atoms. This sphere is so perfect that if we expanded it to the size of the Earth, converting its imperfections in mountains and valleys, the distance between the highest point and the lowest point would be only 14 meters. Compared to the Earth is very little. In fact, the distance between the Everest and the Mariana Trench is 19,882 meters. A lot. However, the Earth is not perfectly spherical because it is flattened by the poles. The real shape of the Earth is that of an ablate spheroid, that is, a spheroid flattened by the poles, as if it was a rugby ball. This bulge is caused by the rotation of the Earth, which causes the diameter at the equator to be 43 kilometers longer than the diameter from one pole to another. And due to this bulge, the point of the Earth furthest from the center of the Earth is not the Mount Everest, but the Chimborazo volcano in Ecuador. Although it measures 6,268 meters measured from the center of the Earth, it is the highest mountain on the planet, surpassing the height of the Everest by 2 kilometers, becoming the closest from the surface of the Earth to outer space. However, the Earth is slightly deformed if we compare it with other celestial bodies that suffer more strongly from the effect of rotation, like Haumea, a dwarf planet that is beyond the orbit of Neptune, in the Kuiper Belt. Its deformation is such that its biggest axis is twice as long as the smallest. It is literally a giant rugby ball. There's a widespread misconception, which is that in the past it was believed that the Earth was flat, and that it was Christopher Columbus who discovered that it was not. This is Erdap Fell, the oldest surviving globe. It was built in 1492, while Columbus was discovering the Americas. Reason why this don't appear, since the explorer did not return to Spain until March 1493. It is one of the oldest evidence of the fact that it was already known that the Earth was a spherical for a long time. In fact, this was already known for a long time. The ancient Greeks already intuited that the Earth was a spherical and many scientists accepted it during the course of history. However, there was a lack of knowledge of the population simply due to a lack of information that made many people believe that it was flat. Many evidence was provided in favor of the sphericity of the Earth. But it was thanks to the Magellan Elcano expedition that it was finally definitely demonstrated. The reason that this expedition was made was because of the Treaty of Tordesillas that prohibited Spain from navigating the eastern part of the world that remained in the hands of the Portuguese, covering the coasts of Africa and the Indian Ocean. The expedition that was the first circumnavigation of the world in history departed from Seville, Spain, on the 10th of August of 1519, with five ships and 234 men and returned three years later, on September 6, 1522, with only one ship and 18 survivors among them. Magallanes was not among them. He died while the expedition was in the Philippines, a few days before reaching the Spice Islands, his objective. Magallanes then became the first man to attempt to circumnavigate the world, and Elcano and the other 17 survivors became the first to achieve it. Currently, going around the world is much easier and faster because we can use airplanes and a straight line path. Because going in a straight line is the fastest path, right? Well, not really. Imagine you want to go from Cairo to San Francisco in the shortest possible route. The first route that will occur to you will be probably this one, right? But if you really wanted to go through the fastest route, the route to choose would be much more different. So different that it would even pass through Greenland. This is what is called the Great Circle, and it is the shortest distance that joins two points on the surface of a sphere. It may seem that the trip doesn't shorten much, but you would save many hours, and the airlines know it well, since it means significant fuel savings. 
If you have traveled by plane before, has it ever happened to you that before making a long trip, you calculate with a ruler the cities that you should fly over, and in the end you hardly saw any of them? Now you know what you were wrong about. But how can we be so sure that the Earth is really spherical? What evidence is available to you? One of them is the position of the Sun on the horizon. As the further south or north you move, the Sun gets closer to the horizon. Something similar happens with the stars that change their position depending on where you are on the planet. The Orion constellation, for example, looks like this in the northern hemisphere, but like this in the southern hemisphere. This is due to the fact that our field of view changes drastically since we move on an almost perfect sphere. Another way to verify this is to wait until the next lunar eclipse and to look at the shadow that the Earth casts over the Moon. Lunar eclipses are produced when the Earth passes between the Sun and the Moon, casting a shadow on it for a while. And indeed, the shadow cast by the Earth is round. Another way to show that the Earth is almost spherical is the alternation of day and night. And as a consequence of this, the time bends. How could this phenomenon be explained on a flat Earth? And if you have the luck of having a telescope at home, you would be able to observe one of the most evident proofs that the rest of the planets in the solar system are spherical. And this leads us to the conclusion that there is no indication that the Earth has to be an exception. Another way to prove that the Earth is spherical is to look at the horizon. If you look at the ships that are on it, you will see that if they move away, first the bottom part will disappear while the mast will continue to be visible. In some places of the planet, it is even possible to see cities that due to the curvature of the Earth, seem submerged underwater. There is a quite curious way to check the shape of the Earth, and it is going around it. If you leave a point and return to this same point going from east to west, you will lose a day. And if you do the same going from west to east, you will gain a day. This is the same thing that happened to Phileas Fogg in the book Around the World in 80 Days. When he arrived to London and he thought that 81 days had passed, when in reality it was only 80. As it says in the book, in fact going to the east is going towards the sun, and therefore the days diminished for him as many times four minutes as degrees he crossed in that direction. But taking into account that the Earth's circumference has 360 degrees, if we multiply them by four minutes, they give us precisely 24 hours. That's the extra day gained unconsciously. In other words, while Phileas Fogg, walking to the east, saw the sun pass 80 times by the meridian, his friends that remained in London only saw it happen 79 times. But there's a way to verify that the Earth is almost spherical, which is spectacular, and for me it is my favorite. To be able to do it, you must go to see a sunset in the sea. When the sun is about to set, crouch down. Wait then for the sun to set completely. When you see the last ray of the sun disappear below the horizon, stand up quickly. Then, thanks to the fact that the Earth is spherical, you will be able to see a second sunset. So we have seen that the Earth is an almost perfect sphere, and anyone should be able to verify it. It is for this reason that the Antipodes exist, which is the diametrically opposite point to the position that you occupy at this very moment. That is to say, what is directly below your feet, at the other end of the Earth. You can find your Antipodes at freemaptools.com, which allows you to find with very high precision the point on the surface of the Earth that is just below your feet. If you look for them, it is very likely that you find that your antipodes are ocean. This is due to the fact that only 30% of the surface of our planet is land, which means that very few areas of the Earth have emerged lands as antipodes. In this map, where emerged lands and their antipodes are represented, these areas are painted orange, and as you can see, they are quite scarce. Practically only found in South America, a part of Spain, East Asia, Antarctica, and the Arctic. And the shortest route to reach your antipodes, going through the surface of the Earth, is always approximately 20,000 kilometers. Thank you very much for watching the video, and goodbye.